For years, the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation was held up as a charity providing scholarships for PhD students. Now, it's coming under fire. Last week, the CEO and board resigned. They're going to do their own forensic audit, and the foundation has asked the Auditor General to investigate a controversial donation they received back in 2016. Now, there's even more questions about how the Trudeau Foundation handled the donation and how the money traces back to the Chinese government. Robert Fife is the Ottawa bureau chief, and he's been breaking this news with Globe reporter Stephen Chase. Today, Bob tells us the story of this donation. I'm Manika Raman-Wilms, and this is The Decibel from The Globe and Mail. Bob, it's great to have you back on the podcast. Always happy to be on the podcast with you. (laughs) Well, I'm glad we can talk to you because there's a lot going on here, and I want you to kind of catch us up here, Bob. Uh, If we can start, I'd like to go back to 2016, actually. Uh, And this is when Trudeau attended a fundraiser, which is really where all of this kind of began. Can you just remind us what was going on then, Bob? Like, maybe even start with setting the scene. What, What was this fundraiser? Okay, so what happened back in 2016 after Mr. Trudeau won a a large majority government, uh, he began having what we called cash for access fundraisers. Both the prime minister and his finance minister and a few other senior ministers would go to private homes and people would show up. They'd pay $1,500 or or a little more, which isn't a lot of money, but it's the fact that they could have private time with the prime minister – and a lot of people uh, were from the Chinese Canadian community as well. One of them, by the by the way, was a guy who wanted a Wealth One Bank, which is now under investigation. A uh, month after that fundraiser, he got approval for his bank, which is now uh, under very serious review uh, by the finance department and has been on CSIS's watch. Interesting. At that same fundraiser was a man named Zheng Bin who is a very senior and very wealthy Chinese man who lives in Beijing. He is a political advisor to the Beijing government and is heads an organization called the China Cultural Industry Association, which is a state-affiliated organization, which he is the president of. Hmm. And he has a partner in that organization. And some of his business dealings is a man named Nu Jingxin. Anyway, this guy shows up at this fundraiser at the Toronto home of a Canada-China Business uh, Association. Mm-hmm. And it's un- rather unusual that a Chinese citizen would be at a fundraiser because they can't give money. And he shouldn't have been there. Only Canadians could give money. Only yes. Canadians can give money. A month later, there was an announcement that Mr. Zhang and his business partner, Mr. Nu, are going to give a million dollars in memory of Pierre Elliott Trudeau. $200,000 was going to go to the Trudeau Foundation, the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. It was set up in Montreal. $750,000 went to the University of Montreal Faculty of Law, where Pierre Trudeau had studied and got his law degree and also had taught there before he became a politician. And then $50,000 was meant to go for a statue of Mr. Trudeau to put outside uh, the University of Montreal Faculty of Law. I just want to focus for a second on the so-called cash for access scandal, because that was big news at the time in 2016 when this was all happening. Can you just remind us, Bob, why was that so important? Well, uh, my colleague and I, uh, Stephen Chase and I, began to work on these stories because there were a lot of wealthy businessmen who had dealings with the federal government uh, who were showing up at these fundraisers. It was a way for them to lobby the government without having to declare that they were lobbying. Consistently do. How does that square with rich people meeting you at private mansions where they beg at to bend your ear for $1,500? That, I mean, how, does, how do those rules meet reality? 
The fact is, uh, at the federal level, our fundraising rules put very strict limits uh, on uh, personal donations. Uh, they have completely eliminated uh, corporate and union donations. Uh, and there is absolute and total transparency for anyone who gives money in anyone who gives money to the federal So it became – we made it more transparent by writing about it because these were all secret. It took us a long time trying to find out who was behind this one. So that cash for access thing is where we first learned that there was a, this Chinese businessman who had showed up and then he gave money to the uh, uh, Trudeau Foundation. Uh, it was a big controversy at the time as well because people were saying this is really fishy. Also at the same time, Trudeau at this particular time was trying to open up to China. He wanted to have a free trade agreement with China. There was talk, believe it or not, of having an extradition treaty with China so wow. that if they were dissidents here that they didn't like, the Chinese would say, oh, well, they're criminals. We want them uh, sent back to Canada. That didn't, didn't happen, but they were talking about it. So all of these things were going on at this time. And it certainly looked like this very wealthy Chinese businessman who was so well connected to the Chinese Communist Party that it was some kind of an influence operation. But we didn't we didn't know that. Not at the time. So so 2016, this Chinese businessman, Zhang Bin, makes this donation after attending this fundraiser. Let's fast forward then. Here we are in, in 2023, Bob. You and Steve Chase learned more about that donation this year. W what did you find? Okay. Uh, we, as you know, had a very high-level senior government official who told us that CSIS had captured a conversation in 2014 between Mr. Zhang and a unnamed commercial attaché at one of the consulates in Canada. This is in 2014. They were talking about there was an election coming. You know, there's a possibility that liberals may become – form the government. Uh, we would like you to make a million-dollar contribution in memory of Pierre Elliott Trudeau, and we will reimburse you for it. Hmm. So we wrote that story on February the 28th, and of course it was pretty explosive because it shows that the Chinese government was using their influence operation directly aimed at uh, the Prime Minister of Canada. Can you just spell this out for us, Bob, though? Like, what, what exactly does that mean? What does that tell us about the donation here? Where's that money? Is? What it tells us is that China was trying to see anything they could to try to help influence uh, the government. And, you know, look, this was a memory of his father. This is a million dollars. Now, I'm not saying that Mr. Trudeau is or anybody is going to be influenced by that or all by that. But that is a classic way that China operates. They use every means they can to try to influence governments, particularly Western governments, but not just Western governments, in any way that may work in their favor. Hmm. How do we know that this was to, to curry favor with the prime minister? Uh, we should say Justin Trudeau himself was not involved with the organization at the time. Uh, he'd stepped away a couple years before when he became liberal leader. Uh, I have not been in any way uh, associated formally or informally with uh, the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation uh, in many, many years. I stepped down uh, uh, from any of my family-related responsibilities uh, shortly after having uh, gotten elected uh, in order to demonstrate. That I mean, couldn't the Chinese billionaires or, or I mean, guess even the Chinese government, could they just not be interested in, in supporting the Trudeau Foundation because of, of Pierre Elliott Trudeau's history there opening up diplomatic relations with China back in the 70s? Couldn't, couldn't that just be kind of a, a gesture there? Yes, except that uh, according to the, the official we had, the CSIS recordings show that this was a Chinese state effort to influence the government. If the Chinese government felt that uh, they wanted to honor the Pierre Elliott Trudeau and gave a million dollars of their own money and publicly announced it, that's a different issue. There's transparency. People would, would say, why are you doing this? This doesn't smell right. But when you try to go through basically a front, a cutout – to give the money, uh, it shows that that is – their intention was to try to in some way or another influence the government. Hmm. Okay, so just to be clear, CSIS is overhearing this conversation between this, this Chinese billionaire Zhang Bin and a attache discussing the 2015 election, the possibilities of the liberals winning. And then also in the same conversation, uh, having this this kind of – this discussion about donating money to the, the Trudeau Foundation that would be reimbursed by the Chinese government. Correct. When we're actually looking at this money, like, can we trace what happened with the tax receipts? Where was it tied to? Okay, so the annual report 
for that year lists uh, the two gentlemen from Beijing as the people who made the donation. Mm -hmm. But the tax receipts do not say that. The tax receipt for 2016 lists the company called Millennium Golden Eagle International Canada. And Millennium Golden Eagle International, that is owned by, by Zhang Bin. Isn't, isn't that right? He's one, of, he's one of the directors of it, yeah. Okay. And the tax receipt was sent to a Hong Kong address. The address in, in Hong Kong is basically a place that sets up shell companies. So it claimed that they had an office there, but there is no office there. We sent somebody. No, There's nobody there. The new... President and CEO Pascal Fournier, who is a University of Ottawa law professor, she began to look into it. And in that file, she found that there was a note from a Chinese affiliated association, which is a state association, uh, an official saying, uh, don't send that tax receipt now to Hong Kong. Send it to our address here in Beijing. Wow. So there was a request from a state-affiliated organization for who should be on the tax receipt and where this address is. Correct. Okay. And so this was a request made to the Trudeau Foundation, and I guess the foundation complied and they did that? The foundation complied and sent the tax receipt to an address in Beijing on the directions of a state-affiliated association. We'll be back after this message. The Globe and Mail has done a lot of uh, the reporting on here, Bob, and I know you and Steve Chase in particular have done a lot of reporting on here. I want to go back to the the tax receipts that that seem to be causing a lot of this, a lot of the issues here, where we're, we're finding out from these tax receipts about these issues. Can you just take us behind the scenes a little bit there? How do we get access to that? Well, we had uh, got access to information documents, um, which we actually got back in like 2017. But uh, we only had access to them for, for two days, and we were busy on something else. We lost access to them. This is does happen in journalism. <laughs> we dropped the ball here. Um, and it was only after when this story broke, some people on the board uh, were saying, well, you guys have those documents. You know, they all assumed we had everything. And I said – what? Oh, yes. Oh, I, I, oh of course, I, I know the documents. <laughs> I go to Steve. I said, Steve, what about these documents? He said, oh, my God. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, to make a long story short, we got the documents, uh, mm -hmm. these access documents um, provided to us again. And then we went through them. And when we went through them, it was very clear that uh, that's where we found the tax receipts. That's when we found out that um, – Alexander Trudeau had it's Justin Trudeau's uh, brother. Bro Justin Trudeau's brother. He was on the board at the time. He was vice president. He is the person who signed that contract with the uh, with the two billionaires. There's a lot of details here, but I really want to get to the point of, you know, why these details matter. So if we're looking at these tax receipts, for example, the person recorded as the donor was changed. It was different, the, different than the address on file. Why, why do those details matter? Well, the details matter because this is a publicly funded foundation, a few steps removed from the government for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it was set up in 2002 uh, with $125 million of Canadian taxpayers' money. The Trudeau family did not put a penny into that. It was all taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. The government still appoints some members of the board. Uh, so does the Trudeau family. Uh, and and the, the foundation members appoint members of the board. So – this is a foundation that has a lot of government involvement in it. And just to be clear, it's not getting ongoing government funding right now, but it was set up. It got by a one, yeah, one time donation of $125 million, mm -hmm. which is a lot of money. It's rather un, it's unheard of. No other prime minister has ever had this with kind of public funding. The other thing is if there was Chinese state involvement in trying to fund a, an influence operation uh, directed at the prime minister, that's worth knowing about. Uh, and not only worth knowing about, let's make sure it doesn't happen again in other aspects of life. Mm. All of this comes because the whole country is now trying to figure out how China is interfering in Canadian um, politics and Canada's domestic affairs. Right. And it just isn't in elections. It, it, it is influence operations. Clearly, what seems to be is directed at the prime minister. Um, we know that 
They try to do this with Canadian businesses. They try to do this at the university level. They are definitely doing it uh, within the Chinese Canadian community because you have so many dissidents and uh, coming out and saying it's pretty bad. So all of these things are real issues, and the public is now having a conversation about this. And that's why um, you know the Bloc Québécois and the Conservatives and everybody say we need a public inquiry. And if we have a public inquiry, presumably we could get also to the bottom of what happened with the with the Trudeau Foundation. The CEO and the board of the Trudeau Foundation resigned last week. So, so Bob, what happened in the weeks leading up to that big shakeup at the foundation? So, amongst the new directors, there was a lot of deep concern of whether there was possibly fraud here. This was just so smelly and that they wanted to have an audit. The members of the um, board who had been there at the time were not keen on a forensic audit um, and certainly did not want a a special committee set up of directors who had not been involved at any in any stage with this donation, they would have overseen the terms of reference for the law firm and the forensic audit. Uh, March 31st, there was a big fight about that. And then a few days later, everybody uh, resigned. Yeah, it was uh, quite except, dramatic. Except, except for three people uh, who were there at the time of the donation. So this became a, <laughs> a pretty major story. For a couple of weeks, as you know, um, these issues were being raised in the House of Commons mm. by opposition parties. It drew in uh, former Governor General David Johnson, who had been a member of the foundation. Right. And, and David Johnston was was appointed special rapporteur by the prime minister to, to look into Chinese interference in Canadian elections. So everybody's saying, how can you have this him be the special rapporteur when he sat on the Trudeau Foundation? Mm-hmm. And he's also a good and he's admitted he's a good family friend of the Trudeaus. And the same thing happened with uh, Morris Rosenberg. Yes. And, and Morris Rosenberg, of course, he was asked by the government to look into foreign interference in the in the 2021 election. Uh, and he put out a report on that back back in February. Yeah, the opposition party is saying, well, you appointed a guy to look into Chinese interference in the 2016 election campaign when he sat on the Trudeau Foundation board when they accepted the money. Yeah, there's a lot of people kind of getting caught in the crosshairs here that have been affiliated with the Trudeau board, which is which is why I think it's it's raising a lot of eyebrows here. It's raising a lot of eyebrows because, you know, perception is everything in politics. And here you have this what looks like tainted money in a fishy deal involving uh, what we now know to be uh, money that was given at the behest of the Chinese government. And uh, and then anybody who's associated with it, Mr. Trudeau keeps looking to these people to help him out of trouble. Uh, but what, what one thing is clear, if the Auditor General goes in and agrees to go in, which I b- believe they will, you know, they do very thorough work. So we will find out at the end of the day, what really went down. Hmm. Bob, one of the the consequences of your story back in February is that the Trudeau Foundation promised to give the money from that donation back, the $140,000 back. Has the foundation done that? On Friday, they told us that they had given the money back, wrote a check to Millennium Golden Eagle International Canada and delivered it to the residents in Dorval um, and the uh, we were told that the money has been uh, cashed. Um, you know, from the time they announced that they were going to give back the money, they were unable to find anybody at home uh, at that place to deliver it to. Um, That's so crazy. That they're tr- they're of, trying to give it back and they, they couldn't then at that they point. They couldn't give it back. Huh. Okay. Uh, this charity seems to be, you know, from all the things that we've talked about here, Bob, it, the charity does seem to be linked to the prime minister and the and the liberal government in some in some ways. Is it is it normal for a charity to have ties like this? Well, if you look at the board of directors and if you look at the members of the foundation, um, it's a liberal who's who's list uh, of um, very prominent liberals. Uh, let me just say, first of all, the foundation does excellent work. It is a superbly important uh, foundation because it provides uh, travel and uh, grants to PhD students, often many people who are underprivileged, so don't have a lot of money. We do not want to see that organization 
uh, fall apart. But I do think that there needs to be a recognition that this isn't a foundation that's set up for the Liberal Party of Canada or for the Trudeau family. And I would hope that the foundation members, when they look to appoint new members of the board, that they will look outside of people who are not partisan um, but are highly respected in the Canadian community and the academic community so they can oversee what is a really, really good organization. So I hope uh, and I have a sense talking to some of the foundation members that they're going to do a much better job of selecting board members who – uh, credentials aren't the fact that they happen to be a member of the Trudeau – aren't fr friends of the Trudeau family or the prime minister or that they're Liberal Party members. Mm. Bob, it's always good to talk to you. Thank you so much for being here today. Happy to do so. I know it was complicated. I hope we were able to <laughs> take people through it. That's it for today. I'm Manika Raman-Wilms. Our producers are Madeline White – Cheryl Sutherland, and Rachel Levy-McLaughlin. David Crosby edits the show. Adrian Chung is our senior producer, and Angela Pacenza is our executive editor. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>